Hello everybody, it's your boy Shingy. As you already know what it is. I'm really excited for this video. Today's video, we're gonna be uh, sharing some tips on how to pick the right film for your portrait photography. As you guys know, I'm a portrait photographer and um, I primarily love, love portraits. Um, I don't know if it, I love portraits more than uh, fashion, but portraits are pretty up there. But there is a lot of things to really consider when you're picking the right film for portraiture because a lot of things are gonna affect your settings and a lot of like, um, you know, grain structure and a lot of other stuff like that. So uh, today we're gonna be sharing what I think about in terms of picking the right film. So this is just my opinion. There's no like proper way of doing this, but I thought this would be a really cool video to share with anybody that is uh, really interested to know how I get my uh, portrait photography done. So tip number one on how to pick uh, the right film is uh, pick a lower ISO film. So we're talking ISO 160 from Portrait 160 and we'll go uh, even Kodak Gold 200, um, Ektar 100 for darker skin tones. Picking a lower film is really, really key. I think this is the biggest key. Um, that is going to affect a lot of things. It's going to affect your settings, how you're going to use your lenses and how uh, you're going to get some really good grain and all that type of stuff. So let's get a little bit into why you should pick the right ISO. Big reason with picking a lower ISO is that you're going to be able to open up wide on your lens. So uh, you're going to be able to get that bokeh effect that separation from subject to background. Uh, you're going to be able to do that a lot more. That's because guys, ISO 100 or 200 does not allow enough light in. ISO 400 allows way too much light in and you're not gonna be able to open up wide on your lenses. So for anybody that is new to photography, opening up wide, it means pretty much uh, shooting at a lower f-stop. So on your lenses, you're gonna notice that there's like a ring and the lower the number on the f number, the more you're gonna be able to get that bokeh effect. So another reason why you should shoot lower ISO film is because you're gonna get less grain. And the less grain is means just pretty much more sharpness in your image. You wanna focus on the eye and the sharper the eye is, the better. And that's the other thing. So it just, it just pretty much promotes sharpness into your image, which gives you that really, really good ability to be drawn in. Especially if you do the first thing where it's like, blur out the background and add some separation between the face and the uh, and the background and you also focus really really close on the eye shooting with medium format this is really incredible there's some really good artists to check out as well that are um exceptional at doing this like rosie matherson absolutely incredible portraits um a lot of you guys probably know her she shoots them on the rz i believe and she pretty much does that she opens up super wide and i think she has like the 110 that goes down to f 2.8 or f 2.5 and she opens up really wide and she shoots it and you just focus creamy focus on the eye and she's absolutely ex exceptional at doing that another thing is you do not want to do this at night because <laughs> if you do do this at night you're gonna have a hard time shooting because you're not gonna be you're not gonna have enough light so uh this is primarily also for daytime shooting aka like maybe cloudy day shooting this would be really really good but cloudy is already kind of pushing it already but um you will get away with it picking black and white film is completely different from um picking uh color negative film so for black and white i highly suggest shooting delta 100 or Delta 400. I know we kind of talked about the ISOs and the separation and all of that stuff, but the reason why I suggest 400 speed film on the Delta is because the Delta is really, really sharp. So you not you might not be able to get that separation because guys, separation does not necessarily make a great portrait, but you also want to get sharpness. I, I rather get sharpness over um, separation. So with Delta 400, you're going to get a lot of sharpness, really, really good film. I highly suggest shooting Delta 400 or Delta 100. Um, Delta is pretty much for me, the best black and white film. That's just my opinion of the fact that it just renders really good sharpness. Like it, it's just the sharpest black and white film. It almost looks like you're shooting digital, which is really, really crazy to even think about. You're going to be extremely, extremely happy. And if you try out all the other films as well, like 
FP4. Is it FP4? I think it's SP FP4. That one is on 100 speed film. That's for another one. So guys, I know you guys are probably going to be asking what about Portrait 400? So with Portrait 400, guys, like I said earlier, uh, with Portrait 400, it's, it already allows a lot of light in. So it's going to make it a little bit more difficult for you to open up wide, especially during the day, because you're going to be getting a lot of light in during the day, which is going to be a lot more challenging. But Portrait 400 will be really, really, really good uh, for sunset. And when you're starting to lose that light, then I really highly suggest popping that Portrait 400 in there. And another trick that you could also do uh, if you want, if you only have Portrait 400 or if you really love the rendition of uh, color rendition. I hope that's a word. <laughs> but if you really like the colors that Portrait 400 produces, then I also highly suggest underexposing your uh, Portrait 400 to 200 speed. So if you underexpose your Portrait 400 to 200 speed, you're still gonna get the grain, but you're able to shoot at 200. It's not gonna change or shift a lot of the colors too much. That's another trick that you could also use, and you could use this with uh, Fuji Pro 400H. But I'm a person that really likes shooting box speed. I don't like underexposing or overexposing my film that much. I just really, really love the, the the stock look of every single film. I get a lot of deep shadows and I get a lot of natural deep shadows because I really meter specifically for certain things. So if I meter for my highlights and then lower the ISO, yeah, I might get enough shadows, but my highlights might be kind of like wonky a little bit, um, at least from my experience. But oh, guys, so another tip is don't be afraid of Ektar 100. Ektar 100 is an incredible, incredible film, guys. But I'll explain why a lot of people don't like shooting Ektar 100 and a lot of people like me like shooting Ektar 100. So Ektar 100 to begin with is a professional film. So you're gonna get pro results. So you're gonna get really beautiful colors and it's gonna perform exceptionally well in terms of sharpness and the grain structure and all of that type of stuff. It's like a fine grain film and it looks mwah, absolutely beautiful. But this film, as you guys know, it renders a lot of reds. This film is not really good for white people because they get red on their face, uh, especially if it's too hot or especially if it's too cold. It renders those reds in their skin way too much and it does not look flattering at all. But if you like shooting darker skin people like black people or lighter skin people, then you're gonna really have fun with this uh, film because it has this richness. It pops a lot of that richness out of the skin because uh, it has browns and like those lighter brown. Oh, it just looks so, so good. It really complements black skin or darker skin or even lighter skin. It's really, really good. So I hope you guys really loved that video. It was really fun uh, sharing with you guys my tips on uh, how I pick my film for portraiture. And if you guys want uh, tips on how to pick film for fashion and all the other stuff that I do, comment down below. And if you really like this video, if you like these tips videos, comment down below. You guys have the power to also request any videos that you guys might be interested in uh, based on my work. And I would love to make any of those videos, guys. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, give it a thumbs up or give it a thumbs down if you don't like it but um yeah hit the subscribe button it really helps the channel grow and if you really love the tips there's a thank you button down there uh it really helps me get some film and cameras but thank you guys so much i hope you guys enjoyed this video follow me on instagram at shop by shingy and check out my portfolio at shopbyshingy.com with that being said thank you guys again deuces